Good morning. So the main goal for today's lesson is to show that the uh, Legendre polynomials are orthogonal on various intervals, which remember just like in the case of Fourier sine cosine series or Bessel series, it's the main property that leads us to finally solve the boundary value problems. So the Sturmlevin problem should lead to infinitely many eigenvalues and eigenfunctions, and the eigenfunctions should be orthogonal because only if they are orthogonal on the relevant interval for that problem, only in that case you can obtain a series solution, so a solution in a series format for which you can compute the coefficients of that series. So orthogonality is the essential property. Unlike the Bessel series or sine and cosine series case, I'm going to show only half of that property and then the, the second half we will just state it without proof. Because remember, there are two main properties to show, one integral to be zero and one non-zero, as you will see um, when we check this orthogonality property. Before we tackle that problem, though, let's go over a couple of uh, more properties on um, Legendre polynomials. Some of these properties are part of the homework, so I'm going to just do a portion of these just to, just to indicate how you're supposed to handle those problems. Um, and later on, when we move on to actually use these properties in solving PDEs, uh, make sure you use them directly and make sure you have that handout, as I mentioned before, um, on Legendre polynomials, the handout from Blackboard. Make sure you have it in front of you for reference. So some of the properties, uh, we mentioned them last time, but before we do that, let's, let's remember the typical notation for a Legendre polynomial, because these polynomials are of two types, one containing even powers, one containing odd powers. From now on, we're going to denote these uh, polynomials using the index in such a way that clearly emphasizes whether it's an even or odd polynomial. So for example, p sub 2n of x will be a naught plus a2 x squared plus a4 x to the power of 4 all the way up to a 2n x to the 2n. So that's often more convenient than just say pn of x, a naught, a2, a4, a n x to the n, and keep on specifying that you really mean n even. Uh, and then later on, if you have an odd polynomial to mention that n is odd. So that, lead, that can lead to lots of confusion because in one case, n represents an even number, in other words, in another case, n represents an odd number. So by writing these Legendre polynomials in this format, in both cases, n is from 0, 1, 2, 3, infinity, right? So p sub 2n plus 1x, this will be a 1x plus a 3x to the power 3 dot dot dot, a sub 2n plus 1, x to the 2n plus 1. So this way avoids any confusion about what the values of n are. So n goes through all the natural numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Um, and then uh, this guy will have only the um, even powers and this one the odd powers. Um, so right, I mean, when n is equal to 0, notice that you get the first term in this polynomial, a1, x to the first, and so on and so forth. Um, and remember, these coefficients are not out of the blue. We assume that they are known. They come from that recursion. I'm not going to write it down again. Remember, there is a recursion formula that generates these coefficients. Um, and then some of the values also are chosen so that these polynomials have some properties we're going to use from now on. So remember, all polynomials go through the point 1, 1. So no matter whether the index is even or odd, if you plug in one into each of these Legendre polynomials, the answer is one, right? The value of the polynomial is one. So that's one property. And I want to point out to exercise 99, um, section 99, exercise number three, which is in the homework, you will see also some other properties that might be useful um, that you have to prove based on uh, the previous problems on that problem. And if you have troubles with this homework, we can discuss it during the office hours as well. But I just want to illustrate maybe one part of the problem and then you do the rest of it later on. So for example, um, 
you need to show that um, the even polynomial evaluated at zero equals minus one to the n two n factorial over two to the power two n times n factorial squared. So this might be necessary if you want to write your answer in a more explicit format, because p to n of zero could be part of the answer, as you'll see later when you solve some integrals. Um, failing that, uh, it will be perfectly fine often to just leave the answer in this form, p to n of zero, assuming that whenever needed, we can actually know what that is equal to. Um, I mean, computer algebra systems obviously know what Legendre polynomials are, so you can enter this directly into some computer algebra system and then you will have the answer. But if you need to write more explicitly what p to n of zero is, then you can have these uh, alternative formulas. So how do you prove that? Well, <clears throat> if you plug in zero into the even polynomial, obviously p to n of zero is just a naught. So in that homework problem to prove that a naught ends up being this, it's just basically an algebra problem to deal with these factorials to write them in a more compact form. So on one hand, let me do it in one more step here. On one hand, we have on from the previous homework problem, that's uh, exercise two on that section, we have that a naught is minus one to the n over two um, with the odd coefficients on the top divided by the even coefficients on the bottom assuming n is even. So actually, if you notice carefully, this reinforces why it's so useful to actually not say n where n is even, but maybe replace n with 2n, because that allows you to actually have the same number uh, in a more compact form. Okay, so once again, this is what a naught is. If n is even, you can write it this way. That, that was one of the uh, goals in problem two in this homework. And the job in problem three is to show that actually this can be written in this more compact form if you replace n with 2n. So if you represent n, the even number, by 2n. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace uh, n with 2n in the formula for r naught, for a naught, sorry. <laughs> Did I say r naught? That's um, from the epidemics. So in the formula for a naught, <clears throat> um, and so if uh, n is replaced by 2n, that's going to be 2n over 2. So that makes it minus 1 to the n. On the top, we have 1, 2, 3, up to 2n minus 1. And on the bottom, uh, 2, 4, 6, all the way up to 2n. And now we're going to do a little trick. Notice that I need to obtain 2n quantity factorial. And if you look carefully, on the top, I have all the odd factors up to 2n. I'm missing the even factors that will complete the 2n factorial. So I'm going to multiply these two fractions, both top and bottom, by the odd, excuse me, the even missing factors just to complete the 2n factorial on the top. Okay, so pause for a moment. All the numbers from 1 to 2n, but odd ones, I'm going to multiply top and bottom all the numbers from 1 to 2n, but even ones. I can rearrange the order of the terms because multiplication is commutative. So now on the top, I'm going to have 2n factorial. All right. On the bottom, I can make this more compact by pulling a 2 factor out of all of these. So here I have 2 times 1. 2 times 2, 2 times 3, up to 2 times n. And another instance of the same thing, right? So, I mean, this, this is basically to the power 2, because this quantity is the same, multiply by itself. OK, how many factors on the bottom here? Well, there's n of them, right? 1, 2, 3, all the way up to n. So I have inside this square parenthesis, I have 2 to the n. And you're left with 1, 2, 3 up to n, which is n factorial. 
And if we distribute the square parentheses, um, we're going to end up with 2 to the power 2n, 2 to the n times 2, times n factorial to the power 2. So again, the point of the exercise is to show the advantage of using 2n instead of n if the uh, index, I mean, if the degree of the Legendre polynomial is even. So give it a try for the second part of the um, problem um, using kind of the same idea. Some of the properties in these problems are very straightforward. So here's another part that it's actually quite easy to show. The derivative of P, um, let me see a little bit here, because uh, I want to leave you, leave some of you, some of the stuff to your own devices. Yeah, so P to N prime of zero, the derivative of the even polynomial evaluated at zero, that's going to be zero. So that's actually easy to show. Right? I mean, if you look carefully when I differentiate the even polynomial, you're going to have 2a2 times x plus 4a4 x to the power 3 and so on. So you're going to have basically um, all the factors multiplied by x. So, of course, when you plug in 0 for x, everything will be 0. Um, by the same token, it's very easy to show that p to n plus 1 of 0 is 0. So if you plug in 0 into the odd polynomial, all the terms contain x as a factor. So if I plug in 0, that's going to be 0. So again, these are little um, well, useful properties so that when, we, when the time comes to actually manipulate these polynomials, we don't have to <clears throat> um, write them explicitly like this. We just use the properties right away. So with that being said, we're going to move on to the second part and tackle the um, orthogonality property, which is the main goal of, like I said, of today's lesson. So stay tuned.